Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, April 21st. And from a COVID-19 variant found in Lucas County to police reform in Ohio, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. But first, let's get a check on our weather. The record low for Toledo is 22. That was set in 1875. It does look safe tonight. Everything would really have to come together exactly perfectly to get to, to that number, but it has happened before. Now tomorrow, there should be some clouds drifting by from time to time, uh, but otherwise, a day that gets a little bit warmer in the afternoon. The high will hit the middle 50s, and then on Friday, kind of another similar day where the sky will be partly sunny on Friday. Clouds are more likely to increase into the afternoon hours and temperatures will have another little bump upward near normal and that should be low 60s come Friday. And the COVID-19 variant first discovered in Brazil has now been found in Lucas County. This comes just days after Lucas County health officials found a case of another variant here locally, that one being the variant first discovered in South Africa. Now, both of these are classified by the CDC as variants of concern because they may be more contagious and are showing a reduced susceptibility to certain treatments. Now, these are the first cases of these variants found in Lucas County, but health officials say there are likely more of them that have just gone undiagnosed. And a recent study suggests that the case fatality rate jumped sharply in young and middle-aged adults after the variant discovered in Brazil started circulating. Deaths increased for nearly all age groups, tripling in those ages 20 to 29 and doubling in adults in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. Lucas County health officials say that vaccination is the best way to protect you and your family from infection and severe illness. All vaccines currently available have shown evidence of protection against these variants. And this all lines up with what Governor Mike DeWine talked about in today's COVID-19 press conference. DeWine once again urged young Ohioans to get a COVID-19 vaccine as these more contagious variants continue to spread throughout the state. And Ohio Department of Health Chief Medical Officer Dr. Bruce Vanderhoff says these new variants are having a greater impact on us young adults. If you're young and unvaccinated, what might not have been much of a concern to you this fall sure ought to be a concern right now. And while numbers are expected to get better over time, especially as more people get their shots, he said that people who are unvaccinated are basically taking a gamble. Until we get a lot more vaccines in people's arms, the unvaccinated are quite simply playing a COVID lottery. And it's a lottery whose consequences are pretty stark. And looking here at Lucas County, we're still at the top of the state's list of counties ranked in order of those with the most cases per 100,000 people to the least. In fact, a number of the state's northern counties are seeing high rates of spread as our neighbors up in Michigan continue to see a surge in COVID-19. But as this variant activity increases, so are vaccinations. Right now, 38% or more than a third of Ohioans have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and 27% are now fully vaccinated. But not all of today's press conference was focused on COVID. DeWine today announced legislation on police reform that's expected to be introduced to state lawmakers pretty soon. So here's a look at some of what that entails. A peace officer oversight board similar to the state oversight boards and other professions like doctors, nurses, and lawyers. A use of force database so that the approximately 1,000 law enforcement agencies in Ohio would all report incidents of force to a central system. An officer disciplinary database to ensure transparency and it would require an independent investigation of officer-involved critical incidents. Now, this is being written up by Ohio House Representative Phil Plummer, a Republican out of Dayton, but it was developed alongside Attorney General Dave Yost, veteran law enforcement officers and organizations, and in consultation with civil rights leaders. DeWine said it's expected to be ready to be introduced in just a few days. And this announcement comes just a day after a 16-year-old girl was shot and killed by police in Columbus. Body cam footage of the incident has been released. In the video, the teen appears to attempt to stab two people with a knife before the officer fires his weapon. Columbus Police Chief Michael Woods said officers immediately assessed her for injuries, called for a medic, and began CPR per division policy. During this time, an officer can be heard saying she came at her with a knife. The teen was taken to the hospital in critical condition where she was later pronounced dead. It's unclear whether anyone else was injured in this incident. And though police declined to release her name, the teen's mother identified her as Micaiah Bryant. 
Franklin County Children's Services also confirmed Micaiah as the teen who was fatally shot. According to Children's Services, Micaiah was a foster child under their care. Micaiah's family says she's the one who called the police for help because girls were fighting outside of her house. In a statement tweeted last night, Columbus Mayor Andrew Ginther said, a young woman tragically lost her life. Soon after the incident last night, a crowd of demonstrators gathered outside of the Columbus Division of Police downtown headquarters chanting Black Lives Matter and say her name, Micaiah Bryant. And this shooting occurred just hours after the verdict was read in another high profile police shooting, this time out of Minneapolis. Former police officer Derek Chauvin was found guilty of murder and manslaughter in the May 2020 death of George Floyd. Now, the Justice Department says they're opening an investigation into the policing practices there in Minneapolis. The Justice Department is already investigating whether Chauvin and the other officers involved in Floyd's death violated his civil rights. The investigation is known as pattern or practice, so looking at whether there's a pattern or practice of unconstitutional or unlawful policing. It'll be a more sweeping investigation of the entire police department and may result in major changes to the way policing is done there. So basically, officials will look at the practices used by police, including use of force and force used during protests and whether the department engages in discriminatory practices. They will also look into the department's handling of misconduct allegations and its treatment of people with behavioral health issues. And before I go, I do want to give you a little something to look forward to. Did you know that several meteor showers are expected to peak in the days and weeks ahead? I didn't. Well, until now, of course. In fact, according to NASA, the annual Lear and Meteor Shower is coming up in the early morning hours Thursday, so tomorrow. But visibility may be a challenge this year for those of us trying to catch the show here in the U.S. Your best chance at catching a glimpse of the meteor shower may require waking up before sunrise. Yuck. The waxing gibbous moon may mess with visibility, but experts say if conditions turn out to be ideal, you could expect to see around 18 visible meteors each hour. So there you have it. I'm not sure I'm willing to wake up at the crack of dawn to sit outside in a freeze warning, but hey, you never know and do each their own. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.